Our next speaker is Ms. Suhag Shukla. Suhag Ji is the executive director and founding member of Hindu American Foundation, one of the premier and pioneering organizations to advocate on behalf of the Hindu American community. Suhag Ji will talk about targeted anti-Hindu hate and bias, the challenges and obstacles before us. Suhag Ji. Thank you. Um, thank you, Hindu Action, for um, hosting this very uh, critically important and timely uh, briefing. Um, thank you all um, for your kind attention to this very important issue. Um, AJF advances the understanding of Hinduism to ensure and to secure the dignity of Hindu Americans now and for generations to come. So I want to talk about two things. Um, and thank you for talking about what's happening on college campuses because um, I would say that there's three major areas in which we're really facing rampant anti-Hindu bias and hate. That's college campuses um, and also in our communities and in um, both civic, corporate, and educational institutions um, at, a, uh, at a legal level. So I'm gonna focus my remarks on both hate crimes as well as institutionalized discrimination. We saw from Tejal then some of the graphic images of the types of attacks that have occurred against Hindu temples. I'm just gonna name some dates, places, and the types of hate crimes that we've seen. Uh, in January 26, 2021 in Davis, California, a statue of Mahatma Gandhi, who's oftentimes seen as a symbol of Hindus, um, was toppled over. In spite of it being approved unanimously for the erection of that statue, and it was opposed by an organization uh, that is run by pro Khalistan activists. In February 2021, a community leader in Fremont, California was doxxed and attempts to intimidate him when individuals on social media goaded fellow activists, Khalistani activists, to go to his home and uh, also to place false uh, and negative reviews on his Google profile, so um, impacting him professionally or trying to. In August of 2022, the Sri Tulsi Mandir in Queens, New York was targeted um, for vandalism and the statue of Mahatma Gandhi that they had was destroyed. August 2022, India Day Parade in Anaheim, uh, protesters disrupted the event with posters targeting Hindu fascism in Anaheim. August 22, Taco Bell in Fremont, California. A Hindu American was verbally abused, harassed, um, slurs uttered towards him, as well as spat on, also by a Khalistani activist. In March 2023, the Indian consulate was vandalized. And again in July 2023, it was lit a fire. In December of this uh, last year, 2023, the SMVS Sri Swaminarayan Temple in Newark, California was targeted with vandalism with graffiti that said F. Modi and Khalistan Zindabad. In January of this year, the Sherwali Mandir was attacked. Uh, maybe that was December. Um, vandalism, where it also said Modi is a terrorist, Khalistan Zindabad. In January of this year, there were numerous reports of about half dozen trucks circling residential parking lots, crowded shopping areas, as well as temples where there is significant presence of Hindu Americans, and strategically parking cars. These trucks also circled temples and busy freeways, stopping traffic. The trucks had lit displays which target the Hindu faith. Though there was an image of Prime Minister Modi, it said Hindu terrorists. Um, for the average person who doesn't know who Narendra Modi is or what he might look like, that's a reflection on all Hindu Americans because why on earth would these trucks be running back and forth across the San Francisco Bay Area if it wasn't for anything other than intimidating and ha harassing Hindu Americans? And then uh, when there was a car rally during the inauguration of the Ram Mandir, uh, 
Khalistani extremists blocked the way and drove into the white shoulder lane and tried to run over a community member who was recording the incident with their truck. When the individual tried to step aside to avoid being hit, they hit the individual with a stick. Uh, so this is just one of many examples just in the past two years where we've seen a spike in anti-Hindu uh, incidents. So I want to talk a little bit about obstacles to justice. First, there's unfamiliarity amongst law enforcement. By the optics of it, they see kind of brown on brown or you know, they see on they see crimes or, or incidents that are occurring. So they might just think that it's personal or political. And the commonality between all of these, and I want to keep some of the burglaries aside because we don't know what's behind those. I mean, there might be the motivation of greed on one hand, but a motivation of hate on the other. The perpetrators that have been caught on video with the, all the temple attacks that I've mentioned, all of the street attacks that I've mentioned, the statements that are made during the commission of the attacks, the nature and content of the graffiti all point to the Khalistan movement. And as Punichi mentioned, the Khalistan movement is a violent separatist movement seeking an independent theocratic Sikh, Sikh state in India's state of Punjab. Now, he also told us some of the quotes of, of some of the leaders of this movement, um, that if my bus is not released by 5 p.m., I'd hack 5,000 Hindus to pieces. Another leader said, I give you my most solemn assurance that until we kill 50,000 Hindus, we will not rest. And a crowd of thousands of pro Khalistan supporters then responded with chants, Hindu dogs, death to them. The reason I bring this up is that there's unfamiliarity with this movement amongst law enforcement and Americans at large that's rooted in sometimes the media uh, not covering history properly or dismissing these culture, uh, dismissing some of the concerns that are being raised by the Hindu American community. And you see that some of that hate, uh, the anti-Hindu hate underlying this movement, you see it in some of the slurs that are uttered or some of the posters that some of these activists carry when they come to ordinary events that the Hindu American community is trying to host. So there's unfamiliarity. There's also just general complacency. Right now, law enforcement is understaffed. It's frustrated by a lot of the negative media uh, attention that it receives. And there's also frustration that local DAs are not prosecuting crimes. So that might be part of it. One example is that when uh, Khalistani separatists showed up at the SMVS Mandir a second time. They had already vandalized it, but they showed up a second time with one of these trucks and were menacingly circling the temple. The temple leaders called law enforcement. Law enforcement did not show up. And then when, when management called them again, they said, well, next time call 911. Um, then, so there's complacency, there's unfamiliarity. There's also bias and unconscious bias. Um, there's, from our experience, there may be bias in federal agencies that should be treating all communities equally. Many of the federal agencies that we meet with regularly also meet with Khalistani leaders. So there's already standing relationships there. And so oftentimes, when we raise concerns about hate crimes or bias incidents that are occurring, um, the conversation pivots to alleged transnational repression instead of acknowledging and addressing the attacks on Hindu American individuals and institutions. Um, and oftentimes we see that these in incidents are not taken seriously by law enforcement because of media bias that I mentioned earlier, of um, issues just not even being covered, um, such as the Air India bombing, um, or that um, threats from groups like Six for Justice are downplayed. Out of all of those crimes that I mentioned, only three have been investigated as hate motivated. Now, getting, just generally speaking, hate crimes, to get law enforcement to see something as a hate crime is a challenge for all communities. There needs to be more education of law enforcement for them to be able to recognize what a hate crime is. Oftentimes, there are these kind of intra-community subtleties that they miss. Um, 
One thing I want to uh, point out is a not all things at Rutgers are um, should be traced back to Audrey Trushke. There's actually some wonderful things happening at Rutgers University, including the research that's coming out of the Network Contagion Research Institute. They have found that there's been a rise of anti-Hindu uh, rhetoric on social media coming from Khalistan supporters. And when there's spikes in that sort of social media rhetoric, it is oftentimes followed by physical attacks. They found the same thing about anti-Semitic um, social media um, and that causal link. So that's something that I encourage uh, local leaders, if you have a, if you run a temple or you're active in your community, to look into those things. And we know also that in Canada, Hindu temple leaders have had um, extremists firing guns into their homes. They, um, when there's people from within the Sikh community who are speaking out against this movement, they've been physically attacked. Um, and of course, we know about the Air India bombing. So um, a lot of these things, if and when they happen at the local temple um, or at the local community level, it's really important that we report these crimes. So many of these things that I listed off, uh, people had not reported them, and we're trying to encourage them to report. Even if nothing happens, if we don't have that data, if law enforcement doesn't have that data, then we, as an organization that's engaged in educating law enforcement, are not able to make them aware or take these issues seriously. The second thing I want to talk about is institutionalized discrimination. Um, I think uh, a couple people have mentioned SB 403. Uh, but we've seen the institutionalizing of caste um, from college campuses to corporations and even at the county and state level. And simultaneously downplaying the atrocities committed by the Nazis. Um, the supporters of the caste policies, um, what they've been able to do is they've partnered with radical scholar activists and benefited from the institutional rot that we witnessed right here on Capitol Hill during the hearings on, cap on, um, on college campuses where we heard from presidents from Yale, Harvard, and Penn, where administrators have become more beholden to an ideology rather than ideals of freedom, equality, and human flourishing, and where proponents of this ideology see Hindu students, similar to Jewish students, as lower on the scale of oppression, and in fact, oppressors. The coalitions that are supporting caste policies also are made up of other South Asians, many who support the Khalistan movement, many who have strong anti-Hindu um, elements amongst them, as well as Islamist organizations. But again, this brown-on-brown -brown optic can sometimes dissuade what are otherwise our normal allies to come in defense of us. Now, not all things are bleak. We do have or challenges pending on these caste policies. But there are some challenges within those legal challenges. One is that it's a novel area of the law. Other challenges are that this prevailing stereotype of the caste system as a inhumane um, hierarchy in which all relations between Hindus are governed in the ways that we treat or mistreat one another is really set in from sixth grade to in the minds of all Americans. The second thing is that instinctively, this feels like it's the right thing. Well, we're helping people who are saying they're being discriminated against. But how can discrimination ever be a solution to discrimination 